Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to part 5 of my Tamiya M8 Greyhound build and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at adding our weathering and final details. So we're going to start off by painting in the snow chains for our tyres and for this we're just going to use some neutral grey which is going to give us a lovely non-metallic base colour for adding our details to our tyres later on. Any overspills I get, I'm just going to go back to our Panzer Grey and I'm just going to paint that in and just remove any of the lighter grey in areas we don't want. So moving on to our weathering proper, we're going to start by adding our first layer of weathering. In this case, it's going to be our dust layer. And for this, we're going to take some Tamiya XF57, XF63, and XF79. And I'm going to roughly make them up to a ratio of 60, 30, and 10. And that's going to give me a nice dirty brownish gray color. And I'm going to tin it down very, very heavily, about maybe 80% lacquer thinner to paint. I've turned down my PSI down to about maybe 10 PSI. And I'm going to very gently start building up this color. I'm only putting a small amount of paint through my airbrush and I'm slowly just going to start building up our dust layer here. I'm going to focus on the lower hull first and slowly start working my way up. But just small amounts of paint and slowly build up. This is going to be our guide to further layers of weathering that we're going to add. And also keeping my brush motions going into vertical, so I'm actually just um, simulating the dust being thrown up onto the side of the vehicle. I'm also going to give some of our horizontal surfaces um, some layers here as well, just to build up that nice dust layer. We want our paint to almost be like a glaze, so as transparent as you can make it, and again just a small amount at a time. So with the dust layer allowed to dry, we're going to actually start adding the mud layers proper. And for this, we're going to be taking some effects from AK Interactive as well as some oil effects. So starting off with the base for our mud, we'll be using some AK Diorama effects, which is our wet mud, dry mud and wet ground effects. So these effects are acrylic pastes that are textured with small grit and um, some pigments in it. For example, here with our our dry ground or dry mud here is like a nice brown color and the handy thing with this is it can be applied straight out of the the uh, the cup here or out of the jar but I would recommend you you work in very small layers small sections at a time and then slowly build it up so what I'm gonna start doing here is any area I feel that mud would catch I'm gonna start building it up so you can see me here that I apply small sections then I'll come back with a brush that's been dipped in water and I'll start pulling and blending out those areas. So you can see me pulling down the effect with a brush that's been dipped in water, and that blends everything out and also gets rid of some of the brush strokes. When working with mud, we're so used to, when it comes to paintwork, of going from dark to highlights. With mud, it's the opposite. You go from the lightest color and you work your way to the darkest. So the lightest um, color here, which in this case is our dry earth, is go or our dry mud, should I say, it's going to represent the oldest mud. So this is caked on dirt that was built up on the vehicle well before it came into contact with the fresh mud. So I'm going to start working on this by just again focusing on the lower hull, applying small amounts at a time and then blending it back. And you'll see now as one layer dries we'll come back in with the darker layers and add the volume to our mud. You'll also see me applying some of the dry earth to our griddles here. And again, by just a small amount at a time, coming back in with a nice soft brush that's been moistened in water, just normal tap water, I can blend it out. So now we start adding some more up-to-date mud or more recently accumulated mud. And for this, we're gonna use their wet ground effects. So this is, again, an acrylic paste, but in this case, it's obviously a darker um, kind of chocolate color, but it's also slightly glossy. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the areas where we added our dry mud effect and then we're going to start painting this effect into that area. Now we still want some of the dry mud 
to um, remain on the on the corners if you like or on the edges it's almost like painting a chip if you like that you have the lighter color and then you paint a darker color into it again focusing on the undercarriage and also going to focus into areas where um, there's sharp corners where mud can accumulate and gather and again just work in very small little sections because this can dry quite quickly so just work small areas and then come back So now we're moving on to the wet ground, which is our darkest color. And for that, as you can see here, it's very intense. And this is gonna be the most up-to-date mud. So we're gonna be very sparing with this. I don't wanna to go too crazy. So I'm just gonna pick out, again, areas where I think the tires might throw mud up onto the lower hull here. I'm gonna focus on the sharp corners, again, where mud will gather and collect. Now to add some actual volume, I'm going to take some Filejo Thick Mud. So this is a pigmented paste. Again, it's a, an acrylic based paste that's got a bit of flock and pigment mixed into it. So you can see it comes across like a very thick mud mixture. It's a very good product. I really enjoy it. I really recommend it too. It's, just, it's very easy to work with. I just decant a small amount onto a cocktail stick here. And I just build up um, into some of the areas I feel the mud would really build up. So any sharp areas, again, that mud could get thrown up and it would stick in place. And this is going to give us some lovely textures to work with. Um, again, less is more, so just work in small areas at a time and just see how we, how we feel about it. The same principle applies, so we're just going to kind of build up into these sharp areas here where mud might get caught and stick in place. On the tires, it's exactly the same process, so we go from the lightest of the mud colours and work our way back to the darkest. So I'll just apply in areas where I feel mud will gather, so in between the chains and the hubcaps, in the actual grooves of the pattern and then coming back with our brush dipped in water I'm just going to start blending it back Once you get into the swing of it, it's actually a pretty quick process to do and because they're acrylics they dry pretty quickly so you can move on to each colour pretty fast. So another layer, which will be our final layer, is going to be some splash mud by Filejo. So this is a really intense, glossy um, acrylic based pigment. So this is the most recent mud that's literally just been splashed up onto the vehicle in that environment. So this is literally it driving through puddles and I'm going to come in and I'm going to start working this in. I'm going to be quite disciplined with this. I'm just going to focus into areas. Um, I just want to add a little bit of extra shade or extra mud too, if you like. I want to make that mud look a little more nasty in certain areas. So I'm just focusing on some of these really sharp corners and edges. And you can see here that I'm actually kind of applying it wet into the mud. And um, that's just because it's so damp here in Ireland that uh, the, the pigments sometimes take a little, a little longer to dry. But if you do that, just make sure that you feather it out by tapping into the uh, effect with a brush, just so you don't get any um, unnatural pooling of the product. And just by painting this into some of the areas we've, we have um, visited already, it has create some really nice different effects and textures. So now we're going to use some oil paints to create some mud splatters. And for this, we're going to take some 502 Octile on Shadow Brown, a little bit of 502 Earth, 
and a small amount of their industrial earth. And I'm going to make washes out of these by just thinning them down very heavily with some artist white spirit. And just by just putting a small amount of the paint in and mixing it thoroughly, I'm going to create some washes of different, some different intensities. You can also mix, mix in different colors you want to create different hues if you wish. It's really up to you what you want to do. Again, oil colors will allow you to make any mixture you want. I'm just going to keep it simple by just using these three colors. So then just loading up a brush, and um, especially an old brush that's got kind of frayed bristles. And then I'm just going to take a cocktail stick and I'm just going to start, as you can see here, just projecting small droplets of wash onto our lower hull here. And this is going to create, one, it's a very handy way of unifying everything together as it acts as a micro filter, but also it creates the idea of small mud droplets being projected up onto the vehicle. I'm also going to use it around the fenders just to create a bit of mud being thrown up onto the um, upper surfaces of our M8. And if it looks a little bit out of scale or if some of the splotches are a bit too big, we can just come back in with a little bit of white spirit on a brush and just wipe it away. So now we're going on to mounting our road wheels. So again, since these are resin, I'm just going to use a small amount of uh, gel type Gorilla Glue. So the crew for this vehicle are from the Bundy. Uh, however, I have changed the heads with some spare Alpine heads. I just found the sculpts on the Alpine figures just a little nicer. And I have painted these up in exactly the same way as my tutorial for painting US tank crews. So I'm going to have a link on the top right or in the video description of this video. So while we're checking out, we want to see how I painted up these figures. So now moving on to some of the finer details. So I did make up some antenna masts out of, I think 0.3 brass wire. And I made some of the small connecting um, collars out of um, small amounts of cut down tammy tape. They will have their own video in, in the upcoming um, future. However, I'm still doing research to see how accurate they are. So I'm just painting up the collars here with a little bit of flat blue. Um, so the, basically the antenna pole or the um, antenna masts come in three foot sections that screw together and they're color coded. I'm not entirely sure if that's the correct color code, um, according to my research, that's what it implied, but I might be misreading it. So I'm going for um, a three post radio configuration, which is normally what they were carrying. They could go up to 15 feet long if they wish, but three seems to be the norm. And I'm just going to glue them into the um, antenna mounts with just a little bit of Gorilla Glue. Um, do keep an eye on these, they will probably get uh, into an episode of Pimp My Sherman at some point in the future. Just to add an extra little bit of detail, I picked up this tow chain from AK Interactive. So this is just um, a tow chain that's been pre-weathered with a nice rusty effect. As you see many MA Greyhounds with tow chains, so I thought I'd add it on our one. Another detail we're going to be adding here is a nail 140 aerial recognition panel. And I have a full tutorial on how to make these, so a link on the top right or in the video description. And it's just made out of tin foil or aluminium foil or aluminium foil. Um, I would recommend maybe using lead foil over using aluminium if you can avoid it. It's just because it doesn't flake off. And I just painted that up as in the tutorial, so check that out if you want to see how I do that. And it just adds a lovely splash of colour. 
To add the tie downs for our stowage, I'm just using some rigging. And this is the rigging you get in model uh, sailing ships. You can find this online for next to nothing. And um, it's, it's in scale and it doesn't fray. So I'm just going to uh, tie it down and literally just using a tweezer, I can actually knot it in place using the grab handles on the engine deck as my anchor points. And then taking a little bit of furry watered down wash. I believe this is Army Painter Strong Tone I'm using here, but any type of heavily diluted wash or um, brown paint like a glaze. Uh, I'm just going to come in and just tint these ropes just to make it look a little bit more in scale and natural. And then we're also going to add some stenciling for ammunition box. This is from Def Models and they do uh, various different stencils for both 30 cal and 50 cal ammunition boxes. So we're just going to take one of the ammo box placards out of this set. I'm just using our standard microsoil and microset. I'm just going to mount it onto our 50 cal box. So there you have it guys. I know I've talked a lot in this video, but I really just wanted to try to explain my process. Maybe some of you might find it useful to you. So guys, um, I really hope you enjoyed uh, this um, series. I absolutely loved working on this. Um, the M8 is such an iconic vehicle and this kit from Tamiya is absolutely beautiful. I would strongly recommend anyone giving it a go even out of the box is beautiful so guys thank you so much uh, do join me in the next video where we're going to be finishing off the diorama for panther 126 finally we're, we're finally there so guys thank you so much i hope you're all staying safe wherever you are in the world and i'll catch you in the next video i've been shane and bye bye